So Sam, why don't you tell our audience what we're gonna do today? Oh, okay. Hi everyone. Speaking part three. <laughs> Is it? Yes, that's what we're gonna do.、Um, I feel awkward. <laughs> so you've answered two questions for me before, and today you're gonna answer the third question. Thanks for being here. I'm honored to be here. No, the honor is mine. So today it's speaking part three. For those who are not familiar, you will be asked to describe a picture where you have thirty seconds to prepare plus sixty seconds of speaking time.、Mm-hmm. So let's give this a try, and I'm gonna show you the picture that you're about to describe.、Uh, are you ready? Yes. All right. Let's have a look. What I first noticed is an elderly couple in front of a big tree on the right side of the picture. The lady on the right is sitting on a chair wearing gray clothes. The gentleman on the left seems to be passing an orange leaf to her. Behind them, beside the big tree, there is a young girl skipping rope and smiling. In the middle of the picture. A boy having blonde hair is playing with a soccer ball with a、uh, by a path. On the foreground, the picture on the left, there is a young lady in a purple hat sitting on a chair at the table covered with a tablecloth. She seems to be having a tea or some coffee. On the background, the picture on the hill, there is a house covered with a blue roof. Around the house, there are some trees. In the sky, a hot air ball,、uh, hot air balloon, is floating in the air. Ah, <sighs> great job! I think this is probably better than the、yeah. other two questions you did before. And I feel it was much easier to answer this question. Well, I'm glad to hear that. The previous ones,、mm. I don't know. I'm not、uh, sure. Maybe you're you're good at describing a picture, and just like the previous videos, we're gonna look at the sentences that you made, and we'll try to find ways to make them better, or if they're already good. In fact, I have heard some good sentences in your answer.、Mm-hmm. We don't need to do anything. The first sentence, actually, the sentence doesn't really have any problem. You mentioned what I first noticed is an elderly couple in front of a big tree. On the right side of the picture,、mm-hmm. right, that's good sentence. Oh, but maybe this is just my preference.、Um, when we're describing a picture,、mm-hmm. I would prefer to start with like the big picture.、Mm. Um, what I usually say is we start with a general description before we go into the smaller details. For instance, I could say this is a picture of a family having a picnic outdoor in a big field.、Mm-hmm. But maybe that sentence will not go well with the rest of the sentences that you made.、Mm-hmm. But that's just an example. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. I think. As far as the second sentence, the lady on the right is sitting on a chair wearing gray clothes. We might just need to restructure the sentence. Oh. So we'll say the lady wearing, wearing gray the clothes, clothes on the right is sitting on a chair. Mm-hmm.、Right? Because if you put that at the end, wearing gray clothes sounds like an action verb, something that she's doing.、Mm. But wearing gray clothes is actually a, a description of the person. The lady wearing gray clothes, and what is she doing? She is sitting on a chair.、Mm-hmm. Right? So don't flip、oh, the order. Oh, I didn't know、order. that. The next sentence: the gentleman on the left seems to be passing an orange leaf to her. With this one, the error is on the word that you chose. Rather than passing, you should use handing.、Mm-hmm. So the gentleman next to her seems to be handing an orange leaf to her. Maybe instead of repeating on the left, I could say next to her. Okay. So that just gives a variation to the answer. Now that I think of it, between passing and handing,、um, I think when we use the verb pass to pass, it is something that can go from one person to another person and then to another person again.、Uh, it might go around to、mm. different people. But when we use the verb to hand,、mm. uh, you're giving it only to that particular person,、okay. and that would be like the end. 
Ah, that might be that the difference. That is the difference. Okay. Yes, I know a lot of people struggle with choosing the right words, and I understand it's not the easiest thing. Sometimes for native speakers, they just know that this is the word to use because they they read a lot, they talk to a lot of people. These become collocations that they're familiar with.、Mm-hmm. Right? So if you feel like it's difficult right now, I encourage you to like I encourage people. To read more, talk to native speakers more. That will definitely help. Let's move on. Behind them, beside the big tree, there is a young girl skipping rope and smiling. I think I heard similar patterns、um, a few times throughout your answer. Sometimes restructuring the sentence can make it sound more natural. Because if I say behind them, beside the big tree, right after one another, it sounds too long, and we don't typically do that. So what we can do is move one of them to the end. Behind them, there is a young girl skipping rope and smiling beside the big tree. Next, in the middle of the picture, a boy having blonde hair is playing with a soccer ball by a path. Oh, is that wrong? Using having blonde hair? I'm glad you asked. We don't say a boy、I、having blonde、it. hair. Yeah, I doubt it. Why? If I say having blonde hair, it sounds temporary. But of course, hair color is not something that changes often.、Right? So having something, for example, we can use it when we describe people eating. Like, oh, a boy having a bowl of soup because the action of eating, of course, will finish after some time. Here, I will say in the middle of the picture, a boy with blonde hair. Is playing with a soccer ball by a path. Here's the next one. On the foreground of the picture, on the left, there is a young lady in a purple hat sitting on a chair at the table covered with a tablecloth. It was too long sentence. <laughs> exactly. When I hear that, it sounds very long. I wonder when it's gonna end. <laughs> so a, f- a, f- a few comments from me here. On the foreground, the preposition is not right. It should be in the foreground. In the foreground of the picture. So for you guys who are not familiar with this kind of expressions describing the locations of things in a picture, you can watch、um, the the previous video that I made on speaking part three. You will see a lot of expressions there that you can learn, practice with, so that when you have to test, you won't struggle with this anymore. Oh, I should watch your videos too. Yes, you definitely should. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> you sound like you're promoting my videos now. <laughs> oh, I think it's good for you. <laughs> well, thank please, you. Please, please watch his videos. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, as Sam said, please watch our videos and. Thumbs up too. <laughs> yes, give a thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, that's most important. <laughs> and leave your comments. <laughs> All right. Okay, so back to your answer. Like I said, we use in the foreground of the picture. On the left, there is a young lady in a purple hat. So again, maybe、uh, we can move the second adverb too. In the foreground of the picture, there is a young lady in a purple hat on the left side, and we can end the sentence there. Then we'll make a new sentence. The second sentence will be: "She's sitting at the table covered with a tablecloth." I've heard people make this mistake. Instead of saying "sitting at the table," the person said "sitting on the table." Of course, we know that's not correct. Not correct. Right, but when we say "sits sitting at the table," we know the person sits somewhere, maybe on a chair. And in this case. If I already said sitting at the table, we don't need to say on a chair anymore. Okay, it's it's a given.、Mm-hmm. Let's continue. She seems to be having a tea or some coffee. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Said some. Um. Yeah. Probably people would just say she seems to be having a tea or coffee. I just wonder if we should like say having tea instead of having a tea. Well, this is the good thing. It's a speaking test, and in a conversation, people often say a tea or a coffee, and this is uncountable, I think. Of course, but in this context, a tea or a coffee just means a cup of tea or a cup of、ah, coffee. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So that's why people often use this expression. Oh, let's grab a coffee. Yeah, I've heard that so many times. That's the reason. Okay,、mm-hmm. mm. next on the background of the picture, on the hill, there is a house covered with a blue roof. 
Okay, a few good things here, but uh, the wrong preposition is used again. Instead of on the background, what are we going to use? In the background. That's right, Sam. In the background of the picture. And then the second adverb, I will move it again to the end instead yeah. of piling that them up in weakness, the beginning. That is my weakness, I think. Well, I think it's not a weakness in terms of the aesthetics or how people, how native speakers speak. That's quite often the way they speak. See, in the background of the picture, there is a house with uh, blue roof rather than covered. Sounds better. I think this is kind of similar to the previous sentence uh, when you describe a boy having blonde hair, right? Then I said, oh, a boy with blonde hair is better. We usually say like a house covered with snow or something like that. House covered with snow is right. When we use covered with something, it's temporary because the snow mm -hmm. will be gone. Mm -hmm. But... The roof of your house stays there as long as your house is not destroyed. That is, yeah, the part of the house too. Right? Or we can use covered, like when we describe cakes, right? like a cake covered with chocolate. But for a house and roof here, maybe just say a house with blue roof. Then we have the second adverb, on top of a hill. Mm. So instead of just saying on the hill, yeah. I add it on top of a on hill. On top of the hill. Around the house, there are some trees. This is already good. And I just want to introduce maybe an, another alternative. Surrounded. The house is surrounded by some trees. <laughs> and the next one, I actually like the vocabulary. In the sky, a hot air balloon is floating in the air. A hot air balloon. Have you ever been in a hot air balloon before? No, never. What about you? Me neither. I think... I would be too scared to get on <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Actually, I'm afraid of height, so I don't think I would do it even if somebody paid for me. <laughs> but yes, uh, in the sky, a hot air balloon is floating in the air. If I may, I would just link this sentence to the previous one. The sentence could become, The house is surrounded by some trees and a hot air balloon is floating above it. Oh. Hmm. So instead of having two independent clauses, we just combine them into one. Okay. Some people ask, oh, my sentences are always short. What can I do? Well, here's one example. Put them together. Combine sentences or combine clauses to make one longer sentence. Awesome. I think you did better than the first two questions that I gave you before. Hopefully, making this video also helps you improve your English. Yeah, I've learned so many things from you. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also hope you guys who are watching this video will also learn new things. And if you do, please share with the rest of us. Um, leave some comments please. so that other people can also learn or know something new. Thank you for watching. Are we done? Or you just so. don't want to be here anymore? <laughs> I'm so hungry. I think Sam is not happy. I I'm better let her go. <laughs> because I have good news for you. What? Well, you helped me with this speaking question part three. Mm -hmm. There is part four. Yes. <laughs> and part three and part four are connected. So I need you to come back again. <laughs> You will have to predict what's gonna happen after or the what's gonna happen next. After seeing the picture again? Yes, you're gonna see oh, the same picture okay. because you're hungry. We're gonna do that another time. Okay. And thanks again for coming. That's my pleasure. So I'll see you again. Soon, very <laughs> soon I think. You can't wait for my phone call. <laughs> I might avoid <laughs> No, our viewers want you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gonna miss me? If you miss Sam, tell her to come back in the comments. And leave some comments. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for today. See you guys in the next video with Sam for part 4. Bye! Bye!